Welcome to the CBT Nuggets BGP series. My name is Jeremy Chara. I'll be hanging out with you throughout this whole series, which I'm really excited to uh, to release to you. As a matter of fact, uh, th this this nugget is always the most weird, awkward one for me to record because it's the last one that I do. I always call it the end at the beginning nugget because I, I want to really have completed the entire series so that when I do this intro, like welcome to the series, I can tell you exactly what you're going to be getting into. It just kind of makes sense. Now, traditionally in the past, if you've had other series with me at CBT Nuggets, uh, I usually title this one uh, Cisco Certification and Getting the Most from the Series. And I usually take about 15 minutes to talk about the Cisco Cisco certification program and uh, what it means, where this fits, how to study, and that kind of thing. Um, I'm not going to do that with this one, and there's two reasons why. One is BGP typically applies to the service provider certification, uh, currently called CCIP. Well, I just got an email yesterday that said Cisco is going to be redoing the service provider uh, track to where it's going to look different. It's, I mean, by time by time you hear this, it probably has happened because I think it's it's supposed to happen in the next month or so. Uh, but I thought, well, why would I why would I cover a whole bunch of Cisco certification stuff, which may or may not be valid uh, by time it's said and done? Uh, but the second reason is, that I I don't really want to dive into certification is this: uh, most of the people that I've found, I've I've taught. BGP a number of times, both uh, in, in the classroom and now with CBT Nuggets. Uh, most of the people that I've found that are really interested in BGP, I don't want to say aren't interested in certification because I find that's an interest for almost everybody. But when it comes to BGP itself, they're more like, I'm working for a service provider. I've got to know this. This is my job. This is this is what I do, what I live, what I breathe every day. Uh, teach it to me. You know, they, they're more hungry for the information, which I love, which is great, uh, which is what this series is going to be about. So so that's why the certification piece is, is uh, missing from this. Uh, but I do still want to tell you what kind of a big picture overview of the series and then how you can best uh, glean information as you go through. One of the first ways that you can effectively use this material is actually CBT Nuggets specialty. It's repetition. Uh, and I say that because it's a, it's a recording. So you can go through it as many times as you want at whatever pace you would like to do. Uh, second off, and this is, this is a big one, you've got to engage. I should have just put engage there. I put, you know, take notes, write down key information that you hear, write down questions, you know, just, just kind of engage with the content. And, you know, and I, and I say that because it's so easy to, uh, to go into kind of just a, I'm watching TV mode. You, you, you hear the stuff, it makes sense, but I mean, th think about, think about last week. Uh, if you watched a TV show last week, you know, maybe you watched uh, Seinfeld uh, and, uh, and someone said, so what was it about? You could probably say, oh, it was about, um, uh, you know, Kramer uh, was, was cooking hot dogs and it caught on fire. It was pretty funny, you know, but if someone said, well, what did Jerry say was the, the meaning of life or, you know, it, it, it's something that probably you'd probably go, ah, I don't remember. And it's just one of those things that we live in an information oversaturated society. I don't, I, whoa, whoa, I'm not getting on my soapbox there uh, of how much information we're, we're letting in our heads. So you really got to focus in and grab the key points, jot them down. If you have a question, jot that down too. You might think, well, why, why jot down questions? Well, because a lot of times you hit the pause button, you go to Google, uh, just like everybody does, and say, uh, can, a, can a route reflector have more than three peers? You know, you, you type in your question, and you oh, okay, it can, okay, great. And, th and then, you know, sure enough, while you're looking at the answer to that question, you know, from Experts Exchange or from Cisco's website or wherever you found the answer to, uh, then, then you scroll down, and you're like, oh, oh, I didn't know this. So you, it's like you're, you're naturally engaging yourself in the material uh, even more by doing that. Uh, and it's, you know, you got to do that. I've, I found out um, uh, CBT Nuggets added a variable speed uh, setting to where people can listen to me talk at two times or even like three times as fast as I actually talk. You know, I sound like a little bit. Blah, 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 blah. <laughs> and I'm like, it's funny because I, I listen to that and I'm like, I can't even keep up with my own 
brain, you know, half the time. I'm, I'm fumbling over my words and, and things like that. So I don't know how you can do it at two times the rate and still retain everything. So please hit the pause button, you know, every now and then do that. And it goes right along with uh, those those last three. Let me, let me kind of group them together. I have build a lab, dig deeper, and fall in love. You might say, well, okay, what do you mean by that? What I mean is there's there's hearing information and then there's truly getting the information and loving it. I I 100% maintain that the people that are really good at networking or BGP is the topic at hand are the people that that really get it so much so that they they just start loving it because they really know it and understand it. And the, the best way I can I can uh, give an example of this is when I got into voice over IP I hated it. Um, this was around uh, 2003. I just got my CCIE in routing and switching, and I'm like, oh, I'm I love routing and switching. And the the uh, the company I worked for at the time, uh, they're they're not around anymore. They're called KnowledgeNet. Uh, but uh, they they said, oh, okay, we want you now to specialize in voice over IP. And I'm you know at that point, I'm like, oh, well, I'm a I'm a CCIE. This will this will be like not not a problem. No no issue. <laughs> Yeah, smack, you know, right across the face there. Voice over IP was a completely radically new change uh, for me. You know, start from scratch kind of thing. Okay, what are what are codecs? What is the Nyquist theorem? I mean, just all kinds of stuff. So I'm getting into this, and within a week, I'm, I'm telling people, I'm like, I hate this. I voice over IP, voice, whatever. I, I do not like this. I don't I don't want to be a voice guy because I love rounding and switching. That's what I really love. That's what I'm really good at. But fast forward a couple years, what I found out about myself is not that I didn't uh, like voice over IP. It's that I didn't get it. Really get it. I mean, I could I could type a few commands and make a router place a phone call. Great. But I didn't really get what was going on. And so because of that, I didn't feel comfortable with it. And I naturally was just like, I don't like this. It's like Apple computers for me. I, I, <laughs> I have one and I love it because of its size and form factor. But there's times where I open it up and I'm like, ugh. I get so frustrated and then I'm like, I don't like Apple because because I, if I could just open a command prompt and type IP config, I'd be happy. You know, there's there's no IP config renew to get a new DHCP address. What kind of system is this? You know, and it's it's not that Apple makes a bad computer at all. It's just you naturally will not like things that you don't know. So take that into this. Let's bridge it over. How do you fall in love with technology? Master it. How do you master technology? Fall in love. It's a catch-22. You keep going back and forth on this thing to where the more that you really get BGP, the more you're going to be like, this is awesome, and the better you're going to get at it. So by the time it's said and done, you'll walk into an ISP and own it because it's just, I mean, it's just your second nature. So now let me bring it back up to my third bullet right there. Well, how do you fall in love? You know, how do you dig deeper? You got to do it. You got to build a lab. Um, back in the day when I got started, there was no GNS3 or there was no, uh, what, what does Cisco have? IOU, the iOS on Unix uh, that they have. I had to invest in, in tens of thousands of dollars of equipment that I eventually sold on eBay for a tenth of what, it, what I paid for it. Um, but just I have a giant rack. And I would say there is some intrinsic value in having that because it's like, wow, that, you know, not only impress your friends, but it's just neat to be able to cable it all up and it all makes sense to you that way. But nowadays, and in, in I put some recommendations there, you know, super string, you know, shoe string budget, you can run BGP on a good old 2500 series, you know, router, get it for 10 bucks buy it now kind of thing off eBay. Um, and as it goes up, you get faster, better routers. But honestly, BGP is so big, like you need such a, a large number of routers to really make an impact with it. I would highly suggest going the GNS3 route. Um, GNS3, if you haven't heard of it, um, it is, uh, oh, what's the website? GNS3.net. Uh, it is a Cisco emulator, which allows you to boot the actual iOS from Cisco uh, and uh, and run it in an emulated environment. It's like it's like a it's not I don't say simulation because it's the real iOS. Every command works. It works exactly like a real device, and you can create amazing labs with this thing. Um, matter of fact, through this series, I use uh, I, I 
I used, I think, two different lab topologies um, that I'm going to include for you to download, and you can, you know, tweak it. You know, you go into Notepad and modify the file to use whatever iOS you have, uh, and uh, and you can use those topologies to study. But you know, build your own, add routers to mine. You know, make this this giant worldwide topology uh, that that you can play in and test in and, and build the sandbox. So when I go through a topic, don't be content just to say, okay, I get it. You know, I, I saw what he did. It makes sense. I get it. Try it out. I mean, it's it's the, you can come up with lab scenarios for yourself on the fly. You can go online. I think they even have like lab repositories for GNS3 where a zillion people have all banded together and put their, their best lab concepts up there and even written labs for them. Matter of fact, there was a company. I just saw this uh, a couple months ago. Um, there's a company that has a new hire test in GNS3, meaning any interview candidates that come in uh, to hire on for a Cisco position, they, they're like, oh, great, so, you, so you're CCNP certified? That's fantastic, great. Well, come with me. And they, they take them into a room and drop them into a lab that takes about an hour long, if you know what you're doing, all built in GNS3 that they could just power up on one of the PCs. And they're like, yeah, why don't you go ahead and uh, configure that router for BGP route dampening? And uh, let me know how that goes. You know, we'll, we'll come back in about an hour and just make sure uh, you know, you, you really have kept up on your knowledge and all that kind of stuff. Amazing, amazing stuff. So doing those, those th three things, uh, you know, it's kind of the, the, the deeper you get into it, the more you're just like, man, I just want to, I want to keep going. I want to keep learning and, uh, you know, get better at this and, and, uh, get a lot of real world scenarios under my belt. That's, that's what's truly going to leave you uh, a master of this technology. Cisco Press did an interview with me uh, a few years ago at one of the Cisco Live conferences. Um, and I, I didn't know what, they just said, hey, you know, just because I've written a couple books. They're like, oh, we just want to do an author interview and, and that kind of thing. Oh, so sure. So I was talking to the gal and I didn't know what they were going to uh, title title the interview. I guess they, they come up with a, a theme. Uh, but they titled mine, they, they, they said, uh, interview with Jeremy Chara, uh, why learning Cisco uh, or teaching Cisco is like motivational speaking. That's, that's what they titled the interview. Because really, what I just told you right there was was kind of what I encapsulated to them in that interview. And and the, the the sum of it was that there's no way I could ever teach you about every single aspect of anything, you know, it, whether it be making muffins to, you know, uh, BGP to, to Cisco, you, you know, you've hit the question mark, right? When you're in Cisco iOS. And, and let me say it this way. You wouldn't want me to teach you about everything in Cisco because it, you would just go, oh my word, is, are you serious? Are you, how many, how deep into the syntax are you really going to go? My goal is really to teach you about the core of BGP, about the core of Cisco to really, you know, in inspire you so much more to say, okay, I get that, you know, to where when you see me do it, you go, okay, I see it. I see what he did, but man, there, I bet you, I bet you, you could tweak and tune it this way. And, and I would say, exactly, exactly. Now go for it. Now, now go out there and try it yourself. Really, you know, really dig in, dig into it, you know, hit that question mark, you know, and go into those, those commands that even aren't documented on Cisco's website. Again, there's, there's, uh, so much depth to everything, but when it boils down, what you really need to know is what makes you successful at what you do every day, whether it be successful at a certification exam, you know, learn the key points, learn learn kind of the, the core topics that they're talking about, whether it be successful at your job, all the other stuff, you know, when, when whether somebody's presented it to you, whether you read it online, all the other stuff, just give it a matter of time. If you're not using it, it will eva uh, evaporate. <laughs> last thing, last thing I'll say, and then I'll launch you into the series. I used to be. I think I still am. I think I'm still certified. Um, I used to be a Novell instructor. That was that was where I began. Was uh, teaching Novell uh, back in the transition between Netware three and Netware four. Um, and just recently, I, I went to uh, uh, work at a network, and they they had Novell uh, clients installed, and. Uh, and I said, I used to know Novell. And he goes, oh, great. Well, come on over to the server. And I was like, whoa, whoa okay. And here, here's the thing. I used to teach Novell. I mean, it's one thing to know Novell. And there's another thing to actually teach it to other people. And I walked up to that server, and I kid you not, I stared at it, and I go, uh, I, I don't even... 
wow. And, you know, that's when it hit me. I'm like, you really do lose this stuff. The last time I touched a Novel, Novel server was 10 years ago, and that was all it took. You know, give me 10 years of not using something, it's gone. So so going through this series, I, that's what I, I really want to emphasize. I've done my best to put together the key topics that you are going to use every single day uh, throughout throughout your job. But, you know, if there's something where you're like, oh, oh, I think we use that, and I think actually we use it this way, Pause the pause the nugget and and dive in. You know, start start searching it out and really, you know, using that yellow pad, the white pad to to form your own kind of orb of knowledge, if you will, that applies specifically to your organization. All right, all right. I think I think that's that's what I wanted to say to get this series started. Let's get going. I hope this has been informative for you. And I